Hello, everyone. My name is Angela Gulick, and I work for the Writing Lab here at Parkland College. This workshop is titled Sentence Structure Review, and the focus is going to be on sentence fragments. This workshop is a general overview of sentence fragments. If you have additional questions about this topic or other writing topics, please go to the Center for Academic Success Resources page. You'll find a list of all of our handouts, PowerPoint presentations, and videos there. Further, at the end of this presentation will be some additional online sources, as well as some sources where you can take online quizzes to uh, figure out what you know about these topics. Well, let's start with basic definitions. Just like in everyday language, a fragment means a smaller piece of something, the same can be said in English. A sentence fragment is a piece or segment of a sentence. In other words, a group of words looks like a sentence. It has a capital letter at the beginning and some sort of punctuation at the end. But the words are actually not complete thoughts on their own. So a sentence fragment is something that is punctuated to look like a sentence, but it's not yet complete. In order to recognize a sentence fragment, you need to understand what a complete sentence is supposed to look like. Here's a quick refresher from another workshop that I did, sentence structure review, run-on sentences, comma splices, and fused sentences. If you want more information about this topic, you can consult that workshop as well. So what is a sentence? I can throw a lot of grammar at you, but basically a sentence is made up of two or three parts. And I have used this metaphor in my other workshops that I like to think of a sentence like a little movie. And my movie is going to have some sort of actor or star. Sometimes it's a person, could be an animal, could be an object. And there's going to be some kind of action taking place. In some sentences require additional information to finish up their thoughts. And that's what I call a completer. I don't much care that you know the grammatical terms for these things. What I'm mostly interested in is your ability, ability to recognize that you have a complete thought versus an incomplete one, and what to do when you have an incomplete thought. Let's look at a couple quick examples. Here's a very short example. Angela dropped. Okay, in this case, the star of my movie is myself, is Angela. And Angela is performing some kind of action, in this case, dropping something. So Angela dropped. However, this is not yet a complete thought. Angela dropped what? A vase, a picture frame, a puppy. A student in class one time said Angela dropped dead, which, while grammatically correct, still made me kind of nervous. But this sentence requires something to finish out the thought. Angela dropped an expensive music box. Angela dropped a frozen turkey on her foot. Angela dropped $75 on a new purse. And Angela dropped by the library to pick up the latest David Sedaris book. So some sentences require three components. The subject, who's our actor. The verb, which is our action. And then something to finish out the thought. On the other hand, some sentences are finished after just those first two pieces, the actor and the action. The Wallard High School Choir performed. This is a complete thought. We have our subject, we have our star, the Wallard High School Choir, and we have a verb, we have an action that this choir did, in, in this case, performed. And this is something that you might see, say, in a newspaper review of an evening's entertainment. Last Friday night, audience members were in for a real treat. Soprano Amy Dolan sang a medley of swing band numbers backed by the Wallard High School Band. The Wallard High School Choir performed. Now we certainly could add some additional detail to this sentence, such as the Wallard High School Choir performed a tribute to Broadway musicals, but it's not necessary that we add these details to have a complete grammatical thought. Some sentences are literally two words long. Uh, Jasper danced. The shortest sentence in the Bible is Jesus wept. So sometimes a sentence can be but two words long. So this is really the process that we recommend, is you just sort of walk your way through the sentence by asking, who's the star? What's the star doing? And do I need anything else to finish up my sentence? So in this case, we have, for Christmas this year, my brother Steve wrapped up a 50-pound bag of birdseed. I laughed. Who or what is the sentence about? Who's the star? My brother Steve. What did Steve do? He wrapped up 
And what did he wrap up? A 50-pound bag of bird seed. I have my complete thought. In this case, it took three parts. The next sentence, I laughed. Who's the star? I am the star. What did I do? I laughed. I don't need anything more. I could add more detail if I wanted to. I laughed at what a terrible job my brother did rapping, but I'm very grateful my birds will eat this winter. But I don't have to add those words. Okay, now let's zero in on fragments. If we know what a sentence is, a fragment is going to be a piece of that, and we need to identify what's missing. For a sentence fragment, the best visual metaphor you can come up with is a train. A train is made up of an engine, this big thing up front here, and several railway, railway cars. Sometimes the train engine is in front of all those little separate cars. It's pulling them. Sometimes the train engine is actually in back of all those railway cars, and it's pushing them. But fragments are very much like these separate railway cars. They don't have enough energy or power to move on their own. They have to be pulled or pushed by a complete sentence, which would be our train engine. Okay, so we have our train engine up here, and we have a little lonely railway car right here. So if a train engine has all three of these parts, we call it a complete sentence or an independent clause. That's just a fancy term for a complete sentence. So the independent clause or complete sentence is your train. On the other hand, if something is missing a detail, if it has a subject and a verb, but it still doesn't express a complete thought, we call that a dependent clause. It's dependent because it depends on our engine to move. So the sentence is like the engine, the fragment is like the railway car. And the only way to get one of these railway cars to move is to connect it to one of those. And that's what we're going to take a look at here today. How do you know you have a dependent clause, a railway car? You know you have a dependent clause if you have a group of words with a subject and a verb, an actor and action, but it won't stand on its own. When you say the dependent clause out loud, you in your own mind or your reader is left to go, and then what? So if we look at this group of words in the purple box, think of it this way. If you put one of these words in front of what used to be a complete sentence, it will no longer be a complete sentence. It will have to have additional information. So I could say something like this. I got my hair cut yesterday. Complete thought. But if I put the word after in front and say, after I got my hair cut yesterday, what? We expect something else. I went out to dinner. I called up some friends. I went to a movie. I came home and took a nap. Or, I know you want to do well in my class. Complete thought. Even though I know you want to do well in my class, then what? So dependent clauses will always sound incomplete. I think this will make more sense as we look at some examples. Here is an example of a dependent clause. While you were napping, what? What happened while I was napping? And one thing about a dependent clause is you can put it anywhere in a sentence, at the beginning, in the middle, and at the end. So let's take a look at this example. While you were napping is our dependent clause. The cat had four kittens. The cat, while you were napping, had four kittens. The cat had four kittens while you were napping. So the dependent clause, the incomplete piece, the railway car, needs to be connected to the engine, the dark blue part here. And it can be done so at the beginning, in the middle, or at the end. Note the punctuation here, though. If your railway car comes before your main sentence, you separate the two with a comma. If your railway car comes in the middle of the sentence, you separate it out with two commas. And if your railway car comes at the end of the sentence, you use no commas at all. Let's look at another example. Since the weather became so cold, in this case, we again have a clause because we have weather, which is our 
star, our subject, and we have became. But the word since is a dependent conjunction, and that's causing us some of the problems. Since the weather became so cold, Jasper hasn't been to the dog groomer. So our dependent clause or our railway car is coming in front. We have a comma, and we have our complete sentence. In this next example, our railway car comes in the middle. Jasper, since the weather became so cold, hasn't been to the dog groomer. Since this appears in the middle of our sentence, we separate it out with the two commas. And finally, Jasper hasn't been to the dog groomer since the weather became so cold. Here, our railway car comes at the very end, and we don't need a comma. Only if it comes at the beginning or in the middle. That's my dog Jasper, by the way. Okay, here's one more. Because I love Lucky Charms, and I do. This is a clause because we have a subject, I, we have an actor, we have a star, and I what? I love something. I love Lucky Charms. But because the word because is here, we have a dependent clause. Because I love Lucky Charms, I am always hopped up on sugar. I am, because I love Lucky Charms, always hopped up on sugar. I am always hopped up on sugar because I love Lucky Charms. So again, we're seeing the exact same pattern. The dependent clause comes first, we, we use a comma. The dependent clause comes in the middle, we separate it out with commas. The dependent clause comes at the very end, no comma. And one of the most common errors I see people make is, by golly, do they ever want to put a comma right here between the word sugar and because. It's only if this phrase comes at the beginning that we would worry about commas. There are a couple other tricky situations that I just wanted to give you heads up on. One involves something called a relative pronoun. Relative pronouns, it's a fairly short list, include the words who and whom, whoever and whomever, whose, which, and that. A relative pronoun relates, that's where we get the relative part, relates an idea back to a noun. And what you need to remember is that a relative pronoun is not the same as a subject. It's not strong enough to be the subject. So let's look at some examples. The green represents the actual sentence. The red represents the relative clause. John Lennon was an extremely talented songwriter, period, who was also instrumental in making people aware of peace. Now in this case, who refers back to John Lennon, but it's not strong enough to be its own sentence. If I would have said he, meaning Mr. Lennon, was also instrumental in making people aware of peace, that would have been fine. But who is another one of those kind of danger words. You put it in front of what could be a sentence, it's not a sentence anymore. I love writing with fountain pens, which have a much smoother flow of ink than ballpoint pens. Again, which is a relative pronoun. If I would have said fountain pens have a much smoother flow of ink than ballpoint pens, I would have been just fine. Bonnie Consuelo was a woman born with no arms, whose story of courage, dignity, and ingenuity should inspire us all. In this case, whose refers back to Bonnie Consuelo's, but it's not strong enough to be its own subject. If I would have said Miss Consuelo's story of courage, dignity, and ingenuity should inspire us all, I would have been fine. Let's take a look at the corrected versions. John Lennon was an extremely talented songwriter. Notice I just got rid of the period, and I lowercase the letter W, who was also instrumental in making people aware of peace. I love writing with fountain pens, which have a much, much smoother flow of ink than ballpoint pens. I just lowercased the W, got rid of the period. Bonnie Consuelo was a woman born with no arms, whose story of courage, dignity, and ingenuity should inspire us all. I took away the period. I lowercased the W. By the way, Bonnie Consuelo is an actual living person, and I have a couple links here if you're interested in learning more about her. She's an absolutely amazing and inspiring woman. And now some final reminders. There are four words or groupings of words that for some reason get people into all kinds of fragment mischief. 
they are such as, especially, including, and for example. Oftentimes, people will begin sentences with these words, but the reality is that whatever follows those words is just a continuation of the previous sentence. It's not strong enough to stand on its own. Rather, it's that railway car that needs to be connected to the previous sentence. Let's look at a couple of examples. When going camping, you need to pack your items carefully, such as a first aid kit, a can opener, a cell phone, a flashlight, and lots of batteries. We have great specific detail here, but this, such as, is a continuation of the items that need to be packed carefully. So the easy way to correct that, when going camping, you need to pack your items carefully, comma, such as a first aid kit, a can opener, a cell phone, a flashlight, and lots of batteries. So we lowercase the s, we put a comma there. I love the singer-songwriters of the 1970s, period, especially Carole King and James Taylor. If we just look at this part, especially Carole King and James Taylor, we have our stars, we have our actors in our sentences, but there's no verb here. And that means that this language needs to be connected to the train engine. I love the singer-songwriters of the 1970s, comma, especially Carole King and James Taylor. And all I've done is I've lowercased that letter E. Sometimes, remember, our language can come in front of the main sentence, including driving to Peoria and hosting a bridal shower, period. I have a crazy weekend planned. In this case, our railway car is in front of our main sentence including driving to Peoria and hosting a bridal shower, comma, I have a crazy weekend planned. And finally, questions can also follow these patterns. Who knew that the English language could be so complicated? For example, sentence fragments. We have a complete grammatical sentence, that's our question, and the for example is just a continuation of this thought. In what way can a sentence be complicated? Well, sentence fragments. So our correction, who knew that the English language could be so complicated, comma, for example, comma, sentence fragments. Other than really just memorizing those four words and remembering it's very rare that you will begin a sentence with them, that's about the best tip I can give you there. This again was just designed to be a quick overview of sentence fragments. If you have additional questions about this topic or others, please come to the Writing Lab in room D120. We're very happy to help you. Also, please remember to check out the CAS resources page. You'll find handouts, PowerPoint presentations, and videos. Also, I've provided some online resources for further information. And the one I like in particular is this one right here called Grammar Bytes. This particular website is just a collection of online exercises that you can take to practice your understanding of these skills. For example, here's one right here, all on sentence fragments. So you can take these interactive exercises, you answer questions and you get feedback, and then there are some additional handouts that will go into more detail. It's a really fun site. It has fun graphics and sound effects, and it's definitely worth checking out. Please keep in mind, however, this particular website might require you to download a small software program onto your computer. That's just so that the graphics and sound effects will work. But again, it's definitely one worth checking out. Thank you for your time and attention today. And again, please remember those of us in the Writing Lab. We are definitely here to help you. Goodbye. <laughs>